Good morning and good evening. Uh, welcome to ONIF, uh, as we call it, Open Networking and Edge Executive Forum. We are really excited. This is day two of the conference. Um, as you know, we have set this up in three different time zones so that people within that time zone can attend and, and listen to some of the top executives who are speaking uh, and, and on behalf of, of ONIF. So thank you very much for joining us. I'm your host, Arpit Jashpura. I head up uh, LF Networking and LF Edge, among other projects at the Linux Foundation. And we have a very exciting lineup of speakers today. Uh, they are top leaders from Asia, and uh, they are all very well-known leaders in the telecommunication edge and the cloud space. So we're going to cover a lot of ground today. And without any more uh, delay, I want to introduce uh, our first speaker. But before I do that, a few housekeeping notes. Uh, if you These are live. So if you have questions, please ask them through the chat. And it's located, the Q&A button is on the top right of your screen. Also, uh, this is being broadcast in 16 languages. So if you want to hear in a different language, there's a button uh, below the world widget. So if you look at the, at the bottom, right, there's something on your screen called world widget. Click there and pick your language. Uh, and if there's any questions, there is always the events staff, LF event staff, that will be online to answer any FAQs. So with that, let me introduce uh, one of the first speakers today. Uh, we have four in this session. We will have a break and then we will have three more. Very, very powerful lineup. Uh, the first speaker is Mark Shen, who is a senior technical manager at Tencent and obviously a board chair for TARS Foundation. Uh, Tencent, as you know, does not need any introduction. They are very active in our edge community, in our cloud community, along with the TARS uh, Foundation. So without any uh, further delay, please welcome Mark Shen. Okay. Um, good morning, everyone. I'm Mark from Tencent. I'm the chair of Tencent Open Source Alliance and the chair of Task Foundation Gavin Ball and also the TSD member of Linux Foundation Aquarino S Stack. Um, it's my pleasure to share with you today about Tencent's practice on cloud and edge. Okay, let's begin. The next thing. Okay. Uh, first of all, let's discuss uh, why do we need edge computing when it comes to cloud computing, everyone will immediately bring up central cloud computing. Um, central cloud computing is a central architecture and the computing resources are located in the central computer room and maintained by the cloud vendors. Um, on the other hand, edge computing is a kind of distributed computing. Uh, computing resources are scattered closer to the data source to achieve the purpose of providing services nearby, mainly because the needs of uh, scenarios are, are constantly changing. Many traditional industries have put uh, forward more new information transformation needs. In general, edge computing can benefit for aspects like uh, larger capacity, lower latency, lower cost, and support for localized processing. And it will be widely used in different areas like cloud gaming and smart office, industry, um, internet, and so on. So, but um, you know, there are also some new challenges that come with the edge computing scenarios uh, like the heterogeneity um, is substantial uh, this is reflected in both software and hardware. 
uh, for example, the central cloud and edge cloud usually uh, use X86 and Linux standard releases. In contrast, edge resources are likely to be cheaper or customized software and hardware due to the need, consider cost and special business requirements, as you know, yeah. And the second is that uh, the scale is huge. Across, um, according to official organization, the number of global IoT devices will exceed 100 billion in 2025, um, just really worldwide. How to manage such large scale equipment is also a very challenging task. And the third one is that um, the environment is complicated. Um, the equipment located in the cloud computer room is okay. And a large amount of terminal equipment is often located in harsh environments. Um, for example, a lot of equipment um, in steel mills is in high temperature environments for a long time. The device network environment is also uh, various weird and uh, wireless like Wi-Fi, 4G, and uh, 5G network, ZB, and uh, etc. And the first point is that the standards are not unified. Uh, there are no standards in many places, or uh, there are many standards, but not a uh, widely recognized standard, especially in management uh, methods. Uh, the result of all these challenges are like uh, you can see in the slide, low efficiency, difficult to manage, and uh, uh, low reliability. Yes, okay. Uh, now I will take about how Tencent faces these challenges. Uh, let's have a look at Tencent cloud and edge infrastructure. The central cloud usually refers to the IDC computer room and the edge cloud will be uh, the EC, OC, Mac computer room in turn. Uh, few devices are, are generally located near the data source, such as a uh, home gateway, uh, traffic light interaction. Uh, generally, the delay uh, between the IoT device and the edge device can be controlled within two um, milliseconds. Uh, suitable for processing business data with extremely high real-time requirements, such as industrial control services. Um, the delayed will, uh, with the edge cloud can be controlled within 10 milliseconds, uh, which can meet the requirements of real-time audio and video business scenarios, AR, VR, and cloud gaming Tencent has um, accomplished many use cases based on this infrastructure, such as Tencent's cloud gaming products like WeGame, Star Cloud Gaming, and the HD video and live streaming like Tencent Video, and we have a product called VC, uh, the connected car and the Ital Italian navigation, and Tencent Meeting and uh, you know uh, Live Zoom. And uh, we have Tencent documents are for smart, uh, for the smart office, and Tencent IoT link is for the IoT. And uh, besides, Tencent also helps a lot of uh, products from other companies uh, that uh, partner with uh, Tencent. They are in different fields like application, live streaming, and marketing, and extra. I will show you um, later. And uh, Tencent works hard to manage those challenges through hardware and software ways. For um, about the hardware, Tencent has edge computing machine, ECM, which provides low latency, high performance, uh, reliable computing and the network um, cloud and services at large nodes close to the user's location. And also we have the uh, edge computing center, that is the mini T block is lightweight uh, deployment providing comprehensive innovation and de deliverable 5G edge computing over all solutions. And you know, T block used many in, in, in China and in our uh, industry also. And we have also have the edge intelligence gateway, IoT gateway is a lightweight edge computing platform with multiple access methods and support cloud native services. 
Uh, let's take a closer look at the hardware, um, as I mentioned just now. Uh, edge computing machine ECM is a product that provides low latency, high aware, uh, availability, and low cost edge computing services by syncing computing power from the central node to, to the edge nodes close to the um, users. Counting more than 300 nodes have been uh, constructed covering uh, the whole region of China. And we have the Edge Computing Center uh, uses the Tencent Cloud self-developed mini T-Block mobile data center infrastructure as a carrier, um, a 5G edge computing and the uh, internet of things. And it also uh, introduces Tencent Cloud edge computing like the ICE Pass SaaS platform. Uh, all these pro product capability to support the cloud 5G to see uh, to the customer or to the business services such as the uh, games, the uh, the 4 4K live broadcast, and also the lo robotics and providing comprehensive innovation and available 5G as computing over all solutions. The next one is the AL LT gateway. This product uh, extends um, industrial grade improvement facing IoT edge application scenarios. It provides IoT device assess AI local analysis and edge cloud collaboration and other functions. It also has a small size, high reliability, and multiple networks, actual cloud, and e easy management. In terms of location scenarios, it is suitable for park security and also smart retail, like the power inspection and smart street lights, uh, street transportation, and also the water conservancy monitoring, and also like the in industrial uh, quality inspection and other scenarios. Um, like about the software, Tencent open source um, several projects just like the uh, uh, Super Edge and Pass. Uh, Super Edge is an open source container management system for edge computing to manage computer resources and container application in multiple edge regions. Open source a um, few months ago. And um, uh, with all our uh, members that you can see um, in the slide. And about the task, that is a high-performance Microsoft framework based on main service and task protocol with multiple pro programming languages as um, also an um, in integrated administration platform with implemented hosting service via flexible scheduling. Uh, task was open source in 2013, and also we found a foundation last year and yesterday, that is the first uh, anniversary of Task Foundation, and we have a good um, uh, celebration for Task. And Task supports like ARM, x86, and multiple platforms, including Mac OS, also uh, Linux and Windows, of course. And let's look at Super Edge. The Super Edge has the following characteristics like the Kubernetes native. Of course, Allied Super Edge extends the uh, powerful container um, orchestration and scheduling capabilities of Kubernetes to the edge. And the Kubernetes users can leverage Super Edge easily for edge uh, environments with uh, minimal learning. And at, like the second point is that um, edge Autonomy and when the network connection between the edge and the cloud is um, unstable or the uh, edge node is offline, the node can still work uh, independently. Um, and the third uh, function is that uh, like distributing node healthy more monitoring, super edge can continue to monitor the process on edge like on the edge side and the glad healthy information for faster and more accurate proper discovery and reporting. And uh, uh, it can also build in edge uh, 
orchestration capability, super as host um, automatic deployment and uh, multi-region microservices. Edge style services are closed loop and it effect effectively uh, reduces the uh, op op operational overhead and improves the uh, for tolerance and the available availability of the system. And the last one is the um, lax uh, tuning. Super Edge ensures that Kubernetes nodes can operate under different network uh, situations. It supports network tuning using TCP, HTTP, and HTTPS. Um, the second open source project is TAS. Um, TAS can quickly build uh, systems and automatically generate code taking into uh, account error uh, easy of use the high performance. At the same time, TAS supports multiple program languages like you can see in the slide, including C++, uh, Golang, Java, Node.js, and PHP, and uh, Python. Um, TAS can help developers and enterprises uh, quickly build their own on stable and reliable uh, distributed application in microservices manner so that they can focus on business logic to improve operational efficiency effectively. And task is working in task level. It can run on physical um, machine, virtual machines, and also containers, and including uh, the Docker and Kubernetes. You can start task um you can you can store task service data in cache also like db and the other file system task framework supports task protocol and also like the other pro protocol tup ssl and http one or two uh, like the pb protocol buffers and other customized protocols task protocol is um an idl based binary and extensible and the cost platform. Uh, this features allow servers um, to use different languages to uh, communicate with each other using RPC and task supports different RPC methods like uh, sync, a sync, and uh, one way request all these methods. Uh, task has multiple functions to government services and can integrate other that was too such as uh, like the Jenkins and Tecton and other open source projects. Additionally, Tencent always, um, uh, Tencent plays uh, different roles in uh, communities that support edge computing such um, as Acorino. And as, much, uh, as most of us know, Acorino is a set of open infrastructure and application blueprints for Edge, spanning a variety of use cases, including 5G, AI, Edge, and ICE, PaaS, IoT for both providers and enterprise Edge domains. The Edge, uh, the Acorino community has worked together to provide shared resources to developers and open source participants to ease uh, the uh, development across the different hardware uh, platforms and architectures. Tencent has contributed to several blueprints in the Acarino um, community. Um, they are the connected vehicle blueprint, which focuses on establishing an open source Mac platform, uh, the backbone for V to X application, the implement functions like accurate location, smarter navigation, and safe drive improvement, and reduce the traffic violation and the exact trip. Like uh, we have also uh, just the other blueprint, uh, ARVR blueprint, and uh, that uh, simulates a cast. Uh, this blueprint simulates a class loan to improve the teachers and students online education um, experience. And the um, next one. Okay. Uh, the 
5G Mac and Fly system blueprint is, um, its target is to support cloud gaming, HD video and live uh, broadcasting. And uh, let's see about the um, case. And there are some um, use cases in Tencent's practice. The first one is the cloud gaming. Uh, edge computing machines can improve the user experience by deploying cloud game servers on edge nodes, reduce the delayed of user operation feedback, and improve the fluency of the picture. And uh, the end-to-end -end interaction of the game is strong. Uh, the edge of ability uh, doing is are connected to the nearest public network through the local uh, operator line. The server in the main node is accessed through the Tencent Cloud private network and like reducing the latency and enhancing the user experience. At the same time, it can achieve multiple point disaster recovery on the public network access um, side and uh, uh, reduce the bandwidth cost of the public network. Uh, the second one is the video live streaming. It is from Huya, that is the uh, Tencent partner uh, with Tencent Cloud Edge Computing nodes uh, covering the whole region of China in relying on high performance computing and low latency network uh, products and services. Huya provides a low latency, high definition, stable interaction video and live streaming experience for a large number of users. During the live broadcast, edge computing transcoding and destruction have been implemented. Plus provides main services and load balance with um, support automatic screen <coughs> after without <coughs> needing memory configuration. And why, why ob obtaining a low network delay, the center's pressure is reduced and the central bandwidth cost is saved by more than uh, 30%. And the network connection delay of edge nodes is less than five minutes, which like provides the uh, uplink quality and viewing experience. Okay. The last case is that, um, a uh, smart city water service. And here I take entire water pollution passion as a that use case. The system can dynamically uh, model and analyze the video on the computing image, um, organism and the uh, vision technology. Uh, the scope of the supervised water area is obtained by the skin um, semantic uh, segmentation or user defined way. And the system realized intelligent water management from abnormal uh, sewage disaster, uh, uh, sewage uh, exchange and uh, river and water source uh, supervision by detecting and uh, class defining the disaster pause video picture. We can judge whether there is a sewage change behavior. Through the target detection algorithm, we can get the real-time location of flowing objects or people or ship, uh, or ship among the coast. In the water area, we can analyze whether there is an um, injection or other uh, prohibited behavior or grade the uh, early warning and realize that efficient and the dynamic management of water area supervision. Yeah. Okay. All right. um, that's thank all. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. That was very insightful. A lot of the blueprints in Acreno are very exciting and Tencent, you know, is really, really leading this. So thank you very much. Uh, we're going to move forward now with the next presentation. Uh, Bill Wren, who is the Chief Open Source Liaison Officer at uh, Huawei GM in, in the ICT Infrastructure Group. 
a uh, very, very, um, you know, uh, strong leader he's been presenting and his vision and the leadership that they provide is extremely good. So without any further delay, Bill, go ahead. Uh, late time and all our helpful friends. And good morning to everyone. I'm uh, Bill Ren and from Huawei. I'm glad to share our thoughts about uh, uh, how to enrich the 5G uh, to be business and uh, make sure the industry knowledge access system can bridge the gap of digitalization. Okay, uh, please go to the next page. <coughs> and as you can see, uh, we all know the fourth industry revolution is arising. And, uh, but we do need to realize this time the uh, fourth time industry is totally different as the first three rounds. No matter its age of steam it, or, or electricity or information, before it's all from supply side. It's focused on more on productivity demands, like the productivity quality, efficiency and consistency. But this time, it's more uh, driving from demand side. It's more focused on value. And then the information, information personalized requirement and diversity requirement is more important. So this require a platform to do this. So next page, I will talk about um, how to do this. As, as you can see, uh, the 5G network is constructing globally and the collaboration of connection and computing uh, is a key and the, uh, for enabling the industry to, to do the digitalization. So that's why we think 5G should serve as the cornerstone for the first industry revolution. And as well, uh, in the middle, we think a unified and open MEC platform is, yeah. is crucial yeah. to make sure we can promote those uh, industry application to go a large scale application, to go mature. So that's why we believe the 5G MEC so, uh, solution is very critical. And we, we do think the unified platform is, is important. So next page. But what's the challenge I, I will talk? Can you go to the next page, please? Yeah. <clears throat> As you can see, the 5G 2B has uh, do a lot of uh, proof of concept project globally. It's claimed that there are more than 6,000 POCs ongoing in the past two years. They are focused on so many scenarios from uh, call manners, HD video, and uh, uh, a lot of uh, smart campus, harbor, and, uh, <coughs> as, and so on. But uh, still, people think that it's difficult to do the replication of this, uh, those applications in a uh, uh, large scale. So what's the, what's the reason? What's the challenge we are facing? We believe because of uh, there is no unified platform. So all the uh, innovation, we start and uh, do it uh, from scratch every year. And there is no closed loop of a business. So the motivation for, for do, doing those industrialization and the revolution is, uh, is make people more frustrated. So that's why we, we think uh, a unified platform is, is needed. So next page, I will talk about how to uh, What's the key reason behind this? You can say, uh, we, we clearly see during those uh, projects, the huge gap between the industry knowledge and the 5G ICT technologies. You know, in 5G or in ICT technology, we all talk about 5G cl cloud, and machine learning, and uh, uh, others, such as Superlink, the, the dy dynamic loading. But uh, for the industry, they could not understand those terminologies. They are uh, uh, experience, expertise, more focused on uh, industry know-how, such as uh, uh, the project product control, quality control, and, and uh, many other uh, industry process and uh, sourcing related uh, uh, scenarios. So just like what's the famous uh, Poist, uh, Tiger mentioned, uh, gave this speak, speak. 
famous saying, the furthest distance in the world is not when I stand in front of you, you cannot see, see me or understand my, our, what we are talking. Mm -hmm. So that's a case what we are doing. It's happening in the ICT industry. So next page. But how to, how to solve this problem? I will talk about it in the next page. So you can say uh, building this industry knowledge ecosystem is very critical. So the industry knowledge ex experience and expertise is just like this pyramid from ERP to MES to SCADA to the <coughs> sensor controlling and even some field manufacturing. But how to replicate those uh, uh, knowledge and uh, experience? You, even if you success in one project, because it's so huge, it's difficult in you know, such large uh, granularity to replicate it. So we have to decomposite it to make sure we achieve a lot of atomic capability, just uh, like in the software microservice based component uh, uh, library. So this could make the project and the knowledge be reusable in a large scale. So you can see we can, uh, based on this microservice uh, based component, we can reorganize it in based on the new uh, scenarios, based on the new process to do this uh, uh, presentation. Then we can achieve uh, uh, those applications in a more large scale, make it more possible and feasible. So that's why we believe we do need to build such kind of a capability in the whole industry. So next page, we will say how to do it. Again, another observation we found during this, uh, uh, the first uh, uh, industry revolution and the digitalization, we found we should not only do the uh, digitalization in, uh, in the past uh, way, like a project based. Uh, so the digitalization should be uh, happening in cross uh, industry collaboration. So the cross industry collaboration, the most important is uh, the platform in the connection because every industry, every vertical industry, especially those top players, they all build their platform. Some of them even aggregated in, in industry uh, level. They have uh, some, some kind of a unified platform like a Predix, like a Siemens, like a, uh, uh, some some other Bosch, they all have a, a different platform. So they all want to do the digitalization and uh, reuse their expertise and uh, uh, experience. So how to make sure this platform, this expertise can uh, leverage the ICT technology. So we, we need to lamp this uh, knowledge, software uh, precipitation, with those API capability from uh, ICT point of view based on the new business scenarios. So there is a, a lack of a industry platform to bridge this gap for the ICT conventional platform. So next, pl next page, you can see uh, in the left hand side, the industry requirement based on different vertical industry knowledge. And the right hand side of the diff technology supply based on the open source uh, practice. So we believe the open source and openness will be more effective methods for building such a, a unified platform to make sure the OT, IT plus the CT can work together very well. Okay, next page. That's why we think in the 5G MEC area, we, uh, that's why we build this open source platform. We call it Edge Gallery uh, uh, Open Source Project. It's have three key value. First is the 5G native. Make sure this uh, uh, 5G native connection capability and the 5G ex uh, more accessible. And the second is Edge native uh, platform architecture. Make sure those uh, services trustworthy and the third one is the diversity, the open edge ecosystem. So we, we build this uh, architecture from design time to runtime, make sure it's a closed loop uh, based on the edge security and edge infrastructure in place. So here, I'd like to show a video to quick, quickly uh, give a 
give you a view about how this edge gallery looks like. Please play this video. Thank you. Edge computing empowers an intelligent society by becoming great avenue for carriers, enterprises and vendors to build new opportunities via best utilization of 5G. Currently, 5G MEC application development, integration, and commissioning poses a lot of difficulties due to heterogeneous platforms. Open unified 5G MEC platform is need of the hour and Edge Gallery is solution in this direction. The Edge Gallery platform community focuses on the 5G edge computing scenario, through open source collaboration to build the framework of resources, applications, security, management of the multiple edge locations, de facto standard for network open services, to achieve interconnection with public clouds and build unified MEC application ecosystem based on the heterogeneous compatible edge infrastructure. To achieve this at Gallery constitutes four major modules each focuses on a set of functionalities pertaining to the MEC application development and deployment. Multi-access edge platform, autonomous, that is rich in platform and network capabilities, support heterogeneous architecture. MEC manager, helps in application orchestration, application lifecycle management, FCAPs and policy-driven closed-loop actions. MEC developer platform, provides toolchain, SDKs, APIs and sandbox features for application development, packaging and testing. MEC application repository, for unified app package format, standardized API between operator app store and MEC manager. Edge Gallery is one-stop platform catering to various types of users by supporting quick integration of existing applications, integration of operators application repository to build federated repository and rapid development of new applications on both x86 and ARM architecture. The developer platform contains a series of developer tools and plugins and provides abundant 5G telecom network capabilities for developers at the edge. The Ed Gallery platform supports commissioning of applications on both the simulator sandbox with simulated MEP and real 5G lab environment which includes the actual 5G network in UPF to allow users to test applications in real 5G edge scenarios. All applications are authenticated and tested for standard and security compliance by application test platform and then published into app repository. MECM management plane takes care of edge nodes management, application package distribution to these nodes and application configuration rules. Complete edge node topology map on live network can be viewed and monitored in MECM the map clearly displays the deployment location of edge nodes, resource usage, hardware and software capabilities, deployed applications and service information on each node. To leverage the collective investments being made by various Edge Gallery community partners, Edge Gallery has introduced the LabBus service, which allows the community test lab to operate with much higher efficiency as a result of their larger scale, dedicated management, and proper tooling. This provides significant capex and opex savings and also improves the quality of tests being conducted. Ed Gallery community is expanding with currently 35 plus participating companies with 111 authors and more than 7,500 commits. Come join us on this great journey of open source collaboration to build a world class unified 5G MEC platform. Yeah, so next page. So thank you for watching this video. You, you probably maybe got a, a big picture of what Edge Gallery looks like. You can see it's more focused on application and uh, preparation, integration, testing, and application uh, release and the deployment. So we can build a, a mirror 5G environment in our lab, in, our, in the community to help the application the developers, the industry players, yeah. enterprise, even our, our operators to build this uh, application repos yeah. repository together. And then uh, we, we even could uh, deploy it in an industry uh, production environment in carrot network. That's our uh, intention. So next page, uh, as you can see, the Edge Gallery, so extend this 5G capability to the Edge and promote this knowledge uh, ecosystem. 
And the uh, edge gallery is more focused on the uh, multiple roles. From developer side, we focus on developer environment. And uh, these uh, uh, application developers and the traders more focus on application repository. And uh, the uh, and operator side in this uh, uh, preliminary environment to do this uh, management and the deployment of MEC and MEP. And also as well as this enterprise uh, uh, customers, such as uh, we have two use cases here, one for to be a business like the robot company to how to deploy that robot application in our platform. The other is we are uh, players, how to deploy we are applications in our platform. So next page. And the uh, edge galleries has started to uh, formally open sourced in last year August and we uh, were actively cooperate with the industry mainstream standards and open source organizations such as 3GPP, GSMA, Open Platform, uh, and ETSI, MEC uh, standards, as well as Linux Foundation uh, is a key player in the open source. We, we actively involve in the Edge Umbrella project and we build our blueprint in the uh, community. So also we work with other alliances such as 5G DNA, ECC, and uh, a, uh, 5G, AIA, and other uh, organizations. Okay, next page. So finally, as you can see, the 5G is just started. 5G 2B is a, is a beginning. As we always know, a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. We believe this fourth industry revolution and the digitalization is a long way to go, but we do need to uh, look at it in a more uh, uh, growing way, just like grow seed in the, in the soil. So we have to uh, do it in a right way to, to uh, build a common uh, open source community to, to reach the common standing, common framework, common architecture, to lamp, to bridge those industry ecosystem with the technical ecosystem as well as this business exit to make sure the developers, the industry expertise, and the end user for enterprise to work together in a uh, sustainable and continuous way to make sure we can reach the uh, target. So that's why I ask for all the industry players, especially for the uh, technical operators, the, uh, no matter if you are from technical side, you are from equipment ma manufacturer window side, or you're from enterprise side, we need to work together in an in, in open and uh, in a software way to make sure the force digitalization uh, can be reachable and can be visible. And uh, we, we, we believe this is the right thing to do. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Uh, thank you. Thank you. There is, uh, I know we, we have very limited time, but there are a couple of questions. I would like to ask you one quick one, if you could answer it quickly. Do you think that Edge Gallery um, is kind of, uh, uh, needs to be done uh, vertically different in different regions of the world? Or so lo is Edge, does Edge Gallery require localization or does it have a unified approach across the world? Sure. That's a, uh... Uh, really a good question. As we, we say, open source, we believe from beginning, it uh, should, uh, by, by natural, it should be global. So once, at the beginning, once we think of should do the open source community, open source platform, open source project, we, we always think it should be global. But uh, as you can see from past one year, those uh, uh, global uh, the pandemic scenes, we, uh, we start from uh, Asia area, mainly from mainland of China. We focus on the top three operators uh, in, in China as the first step, but we already started working with our European partners and as well as other, you know, uh, other areas. So we are definitely uh, believe from our uh, <coughs> initiative uh, target, it should be global. Okay. So, 
Very, very good. I think uh, there was another question in a similar way in which I'll probably answer as well, which is, uh, you know, does does this require, uh, you know, does companies and, and effort require uh, partnership with U.S. and Europe uh, companies or, you know, do you do it on your own? And I think the answer is very clear, right? Bill said it very yes, well. Yes, yes. Open source so is a global one collaboration. One <laughs> yeah, one more thing is, as you may say, we open source it in Gate. Actually, we always do it also in GitHub. So it's uh, yep. two link could be, could be easily reachable. And yep. uh, it's, yeah. Very good. very good. Thank you very much, Bill. Very insightful. Uh, glad to have you on board. Thank you. Thank you, Akit. Bye-bye. Yeah. Very good. OK, so moving on, uh, the next speaker, no introduction. And, uh, you know, he is probably, I would say, single-handedly, if not with his whole team, turned the world upside down of telecommunications, right? And, and uh, you know, I think from the geo days to the Rakuten days, uh, you know, he's a thought leader which we all, who we all admire. Uh, we look forward to hearing him all the time. He's always got some, you know, some crazy, some real, some actually very cool ideas that we all would like to hear and borrow. So without any further delay, please welcome, uh, you know, Tarek Amin, CTO of Rakuten. Thank you very much, Arpit. Nice to be with you today. Um, as usual, I really, really enjoy um, this type of forums because it gives me um, a path to discuss, um, you know, the main building blocks of how we envisioned having an open, disaggregated, uh, cloud-native uh, network. So um, with that ado, let me start my presentation just giving everybody uh, a little bit of understanding about what is really Rakata. And before we are a mobile operator, I think I've, I've spent a lot of time talking about this before. And one of the primary reasons um, that attracted me uh, to move from India and come to Japan was really this large, massive ecosystem, a company that really has, in the beginning, um, fundamentally no business uh, to do with telecom. It is an internet-facing company that is in banking, in e-commerce, in uh, digital payments, um, uh, sports, because we, we believe that has a big impact on branding, uh, and, and various uh, content and media application. So it is to my knowledge, the first time that an OTT internet company had a desire to really enter connectivity. For me personally, I thought this is a great opportunity to influence a direction, to change the underlying foundation of how mobile network is built today and sustained towards a path of software upgradability towards the future. Uh, building a foundation that does not depend on hardware, a foundation that really is built on a merit of elasticity, resiliency, and cloud in every component in this network. Something that I always felt and believe that we resisted this change for different reasons, uh, whether it is readiness of technology, readiness of organization, and so on. So uh, a glimpse on the journey in Rakuten Mobile as we entered, um, you know, just to give you a, a perspective, uh, we haven't been in this business for a long time in the mobile side. Uh, I joined uh, Rakuten in June 2018. And uh, when I remember when I came to Japan, I, within the mobile division, there was about six people. Part of my excitement, when we talk about, and when you hear in the industry that Rakuten was able to build a, fu a fundamentally new platform architecture because it's a green field. I say, you're absolutely right. But what is the definition of green field? It's about green field as in mindsets, mindsets of people and organization that I needed to have in order to build this dream. And, and yes, it is absolutely a crazy idea. And the idea was to build a network that's completely disaggregated, taking the most complex workload and starting with an area that I really would tell you, I am so glad that at least Rakuten now is opening up the debate on this industry around Open RAN and the importance of Open RAN to our evolution. So we went from, um, uh, you know, I, uh, starting from April 2018, when we were awarded the Spectrum, we launched in less, in less than two years, 
uh, and build our backbone, uh, new platform architecture and our cloud uh, in a record time. Now, how we've enabled this is having an absolute fundamental belief that we needed to achieve the following four big pillars in our platform uh, build out. Number one, and this is the most important thing for this industry, the radio must get disaggregated. This is no longer, I, in my opinion, about a dream. This is more of a reality. It was too important to push to get disaggregation on radio. Of course, it has an impact on costs, and it was significant impact in both Alpex and CapEx. But I think a lot of people will realize what I already see and what my team see is the biggest impact of disaggregation, cloudification of the network, is what happens in the third pillar. I am, uh, I call this maybe in the telecom industry, we need to bring sexy back to telecom. Get us into a discussion point around autonomy, a network that runs on its own, a network that discovers issues that is able to heal itself and he unable to grow uh, without interventions from back office operation and so on. So this was really, really critical on the strategy level. And uh, on open RAN, you know, we pushed in the, in the early days. It wasn't simple. It wasn't very easy to convince. And even I think um, I, I mentioned this before, um, I spent an enormous time trying to convince um, Nokia in the early days that this is a good thing for them, a good thing that to open their interfaces on their remote radio head, allow us to do the integration with our open RAN software vendor. And in fact, they did this. And I, and I tell this all the time. This is the carriage that is needed in this industry to move forward. But we quickly diversified the supply chain. And the supply chain was about hardware. Massive diversification of hardware sets from macro, mini macro, small cell, enterprise, femto, and a highly innovative, completely ORAN compliant 5G platforms for both millimeter wave and sub six. And, and what a world of a difference now we have seen. Our open RAN platform architecture was not built just to achieve only CapEx reduction. But the critical thing that happened with it is a philosophy and an idea that our licensed radio products need to behave exactly like Wi-Fi access points. They need to have zero touch provisioning. They need to have flawless automation on how you configure them. We need to abandon legacy organizational structure and move forward into a new world in which autonomy takes the essence of the DNA of how you run and manage these networks. And in the context of doing so, we realized actually the minute that you have achieved mass scale automation. Now this is where the elegant uses cases starts to come about. When you disaggregate and from day zero, even on LTE, especially on radio, you have the separation of CU, DU, and in 4G and packet core, you implement user plane function disaggregation. We decided to build the world most advanced and largest mobile edge data network uh, in Japan. And, and to my knowledge, I think this is actually the largest across the globe. Um, we've commissioned in less than 14 months over 4,300 data centers that are not manned, fully autonomous on how we configured our racks, how we installed the workloads, how we moved from uh, hardware-based BBU to a software-based baseband running on our far edge data center. All of this is connected through a massive optical backbone that supports photonic mesh. This is where the future use cases for 5G as we look at edge. This is what I am looking forward to is what are the undiscovered use cases that are gonna take advantage of this massive scalable edge architecture and the ultra low latency that, that we will deliver uh, to the application layer. And uh, in terms of, uh, we also got asked, well, how the network is running in Japan? Is it really, a network that only works in rural areas? Is it a network that scales? Can it support the capacity that's needed? I mean, obviously I would tell you, Tokyo is not a rural area. Tokyo is a very, very dense area. We carry a significant capacity in our network. And we started with the premise that everything in the mobile network must be built on an IPv6 architecture. Since inception, we have almost zero outages on services due to the reliability that we implemented. On the core, we have now uh, had the largest network functions 
deployed on our cloud platforms with over 800 core network functions, fully virtualized, fully redundant, and completely orchestrated. This is unique. The um, metrics uh, and, and performance KPIs that we see, I think these are world-class. If you look at uh, drop call rates, um, and even better, the RCS, which in, in Rocket and Mobile Network today, north of 87% of our traffic passes through our RCS application because we have accepted that voice is an app. So we abandoned this concept and philosophy that we need to fight for traditional legacy services and innovate, innovate in enhanced messaging and, and voice. On uh, cloud, the entire mobile network has been built on two hardware types, completely commoditized and, and designed for ultra simplicity and driving also automation and better and easier inventory management uh, in our platforms. On radio, I think this is an area where, I, I, as I mentioned before, demystifying the secrets of radio is really vital. And, and this wasn't easy. I, I'm not gonna kid anybody that to go to open RAN in the early days for Rakuten was a nightmare, a nightmare to get the software to work at scale. It is very different to say that you could do one POC in the lab and connect a few devices and say that you have accomplished a great job. But what we wanted to prove that you could connect up to 700 devices simultaneously and the system can scale and the software can behave and the underlying cloud and the changes that we have to do to make the cloud telco ready. Believe me, this is not trivial. There's a lot of things that we have done to make sure that the software uh, uh, workload of radio is running at scale and delivering the performance and reliability. And then the parts that I am personally so thrilled about, I mean, of course, Open RAN and the core and the cloud are all great. And the, this is the parts that I get thrilled about, is now what is the undiscovered opportunity that, uh, that we could unlock? This is about all automation. You know, moving into a um, uh, relentless way of how you re need to run and manage the network. It is truly very, very easy for me to tell you that on the core network today, it is, uh, I don't have hardly any operational people. I, on the radio side, we started now saying, maybe we don't need field technicians because I removed all of the electronics from the site and I managed them in an unmanned data centers with enough resiliency and healing on the underlying platforms. So the automation is so critical and so important, but it's an end-to-end -end story and it's not about a function into the network. We spend a considerable amount of time building the systems that is, is carrying today racket and mobile network. And the objective for all of this is just about customer delight, problem discovery, problem resolution uh, in a much more uh, agile manner than it ever has happened before in, in this industry. Um, uh, one of the key things that we have done is the investments that we have done in our own, what we call racket and communication platform is a creation of something. I haven't really shared this with, with anybody, so I'll share it on, on this forum. This is what we will now announce to the world in, uh, in June of this year, is the availability of the world first enterprise telecom app store, the entire management plane that anything you need from inventory management, performance management, configuration management, VNF, CNF, lifecycle management, uh, digital workflow, incident management, every tool set, could you imagine now it all resides in a symbol microservices, non-monolithic architecture, completely cloud native to minimize complexity and allows you to drive more productivity and efficiency into this network. This is something that we are really, really thrilled uh, to share and um, start to really discuss with, uh, with, with prospective customers of Rakuten outside of Japan to materialize the stream of an open platform towards OSS, BSS, and orchestration in uh, running and managing today and tomorrow's networks. And then the, one might ask, okay, well, so what? Great technology. What does this really mean to society? What does it mean to, I think all of us have talked about it in one industry forum or the other, about the number of unconnected people across this world, about the importance of connectivity to society transformation. 
So I'll share with you that the underlying cost structure of Rocket and Mobile Network, I think it's offering us an unbelievable opportunity to completely reimagine how we offer our customers, our rate plans, data consumption plans, et cetera. We did something I believe has never happened in the world. And we offered now the complete connectivity up to one GB for free for life. This hasn't happened at all. But in order to achieve those metrics, you know, we, we really thought very carefully about how are we gonna manage our cost structure? How are we gonna manage our uh, uh, revenue and make sure that we have a sustainable business as well? So if you see this, and if you walk into a Rakuten store today, both offline and online, there is only a single plan. There is not multitude of plans. One plan that starts with free. If you consume uh, less than one GB, um, you will not have to pay anything. And by the way, this includes international minutes as well and international calling and, and, and so on. And then you have a ladder that, that, uh, that, that you could pay depending on data consumption model. But at best, uh, at worst, sorry, if you go to an unlimited model, it's about 27 US dollars for an, a completely unlimited plan in Rakuten network. And um, for us, I can't tell you that the approach that we have taken here, I wish I had a bit more time to tell you how we negotiate with our vendors. Now, this wasn't easy. Every vendor that came and every partner that came to Rakuten, I spent enormous time of energy to educate them about the importance of open source. And I have classic examples that we have taken proprietary software stack and completely made it open source into our platform architecture. So the first rule of engagement with Rakuten, can you make your platform open source? I will embrace you, help you, support you, and show you a path to revenue. And um, you know, lastly, I'll end into this. I mean, obviously our vision is to revolutionize this telco industry. We wanna help, we wanna par partner, and we wanna be open, completely open and collaborative on a new world and a new approach on uh, uh, how we go, not just only in Japan, but provide lessons learned and provide valuable insights for anybody that is willing to, to think about a world that is driven by software, not driven by hardware. I think this is the value that we could bring into to the table. And this is uh, you know, our hierarchy and dream is the realization of what we call our racket and communication platform, targeting four pillars. One is about cloud and connectivity. Two is about network functions. Three is about intelligent operations. And fourth is about digital marketplace experiences. Um, so I hope this has been informative for everybody. And, and uh, maybe I'll hand it over to you just to see if you have any questions or answers. Yeah, no, this is, this is amazing, uh, Tarek. I mean, I'm, I'm sure you're gonna be bombarded with questions, but let's take a few uh, right away. Uh, how big are your uh, uh, thousands of edge data centers um, typically? So, so we put uh, about uh, one to two rack and it could be, the maximum is up to three racks. I, I basically host uh, anywhere between the, the first true far edge workload today is my VRAN workload. And, uh, and uh, so we host right between 30 to about 98 sites or so on, on our edge uh, platforms. There is 4,300 and a, li a little bit higher than this today that we've deployed in Japan. And by the time we're done, maybe we'll, we'll end up at around uh, 4,800. I know this number might seem quite a bit, but uh, keep in mind, these are completely unmanned. Uh, they're autonomously managed. And um, you know the, the use cases that we're gonna look for is what can we enable next? Like maybe about our own CDN to be deployed in a few of these locations um, because the distance between the site to the far edge is only 30 kilometers, it's not that far. Yeah, okay, okay, gotcha. Any breakdown on IPv4, V6 traffic? Yeah, so, so this, is a, this is a really interesting thing. I mean, when I, when I came in here, um, this was more of a, a cultural issue, you know, to, to educate everybody that part of the contractual agreement that I even did with my own vendor, so the traffic inside my network, 100% IPv6. So, I mean, just imagine this fundamental transformation in thinking. I mean, I, I, I'll tell you one, one quick thing. Even 
when we started our own RCP journey, as you know, IPv6 on Kubernetes world was not even a G8 release <laughs> yet. Yep. So just to go through these basic and change that, today we drive right about 70% of our traffic is going through IPv6. Okay. Internally, 100%. And, okay. uh, and externally, we keep driving this and, and I call it, uh, you know, I have, an in, I have an external promotion department that encourages the utilization of IPv6 including with third-party companies and third-party websites to encourage them about migration to from IPv4 to IPv6. Very good. I know we have several other questions. We'll probably take them, uh, take them offline. Uh, I think I'll take the last one here, which is uh, as you move to, obviously you have, you've been a big supporter of open source for sure. Um, and, and, and then, in terms of disaggregation, obviously open RAN is, is or ORAN and you know things are, are important. I think we are seeing the world telecommunications providers also move to an open source world, which is very encouraging. Uh, and they're dragging standards along, right? Etsy, 3GPP, et cetera. So what's your view on sort of open source and open standards, right, as, as they move forward? You know, this is, uh, so, so first of all, I, I will tell you, standards are extremely critical um, in, in terms of their relative importance to bring the industry towards uniformity on the creation of the solution. But I, but I also will tell you, I, I have a, maybe a slightly different point of view. It will always be factual thing that standards will take time to evolve and develop. And now what I would suggest for people to consider and think about is, it doesn't mean we as enterprises should stop evolving. It doesn't mean that we shouldn't stop exploring partnerships and models of collaboration. I think for me right now, it's becoming clear. The beauty about open source is just unreal, unreal. When you have the whole world working with you to collaborate, to co-innovate, to co-develop, and in, in certain contexts, it's okay if you are slightly ahead of standards and you go back in and try to fix an address, but I, I much rather be agile than just to say, I'm just gonna wait for years until the perfect thing comes across. So I, I, am, I am so thrilled about this community aspect. I feel like there's a family and the family understand the value of what they're all contributing towards. Um, and you know, surprisingly, I'll tell you about this. I, I, we started showing the vendors how to make money out of open source. And they're liking it. It's a great model. It's yeah. a really win-win for everybody. Absolutely. I think that is a great statement to end. And we really thank you, Tariq. Thank you very to, much. Thank you for taking the time. Thank you. Thank you. Really appreciate it. All right. Take care. Okay. Uh, for the next presentation, we have, uh, uh, you know, one of the largest uh, service providers in China, uh, China Telecom. And we have uh, Sun... Yong, uh, who is in the SDN Research Center at China Telecom. And uh, they are thinking ahead on how to move not just automated network, but automation into intent-based. So it is a very fascinating journey that, you know, I, I know I am very excited about, but without any further delay, please take it on. Okay, thank you. Uh, thanks, Abby. Yes, and uh, it's my pleasure to take the presentation here. Um, okay, so let's take, uh, start our uh, slides. Uh, uh, next, please. Yes. Mm. Uh, the, in, in this presentation, I will just focus on uh, our cloud network convergence. Uh, this is our strategy for China Telecom, and I will discuss about the scenario of intent-based network and also our current uh, research and the development of in IBN network. Okay, next, please. Yes, this is, uh, uh, I think this is uh, very familiar for all of you. And uh, uh, we really have increased the amount for cloud network convergence uh, from our customers and our the industry. Uh, from the point of view of cloud network convergence, I think we have different phases. For example, uh, in the first phase, uh, 
our customers' supporting system uh, and some applications will transfer to the cloud or, or application will be cloud native. So the customers will need uh, different uh, connections from their side to the cloud. They need different kinds of connections like high availability and uh, high quality and low latency. But to the next phase, and uh, when the application and the requirements become more complicated, and they will need a lot of uh, different uh, requirements. So we need to introduce a lot of different intelligence like IBM, I think. And uh, after the third uh, phase, uh, then the cloud will be just a part of the network and the network will be just a part of the cloud. Uh, they will be just in, in one uh, integration. So in that part, uh, the network is just a, a lot of network devices will be built uh, cloud native. So in that phase, uh, the cloud and network will become more complicated and uh, we, we need to introduce a lot of more intelligence in our supporting system. So next please. Yes, and this is the architecture of our overview of cloud network convergence in our CTNet 2030. This is a white paper published by China Telecom last year. And in this whole architecture, there are mainly three parts. The first one is we introduce a unified cloud network infrastructure. So in this structure, we will have cloud and uh, some, and we will have different kinds of network. And uh, for the next, mm, next one is uh, we will have uh, heterogeneous resources. Uh, for example, the 5G, 6G, Internet of Thing, uh, and the fixed line and satellite, uh, we have different heterogeneous resources and uh, they were also uh, to uh, say connected to the network and to the cloud. And the, the most important, I think, what we, we really need, and the, this is the missing part, is the, the cloud network operating system. Uh, this is a, a cloud, cloud, cloud network, a, a very intelligent brain, and the, that will be very important to support such a large and the, the huge um, network and the cloud and the, to, to uh, provide our customer very uh, good uh, uh, our service. Okay, next, please. So uh, I will uh, discuss some uh, details about the cloud network operating system. Actually, uh, in this uh, in this architecture, in the uh, in the main part, this is the network cloud operating system. And uh, the, the operating system will need to abstract and manage and orchestrate uh, uh, various resources, uh, including the network, the, the, the cloud, in a unified way, and it also need to support cloud native development environment. And also, uh, we will abstract different resources uh, from the network and the, from the cloud and uh, open it to uh, third party applications. So different people can use these different app, uh, capabilities. And there are some major features here, uh, like we, we need to have the digital wing uh, to simulate and monitor the real-time status of a cloud, cloud network operation system. And uh, we also need uh, to have self-feeding uh, capability, uh, to have the self-adaptive resource scheduling capability, and uh, of the very important thing is to have the intent-based engine. The intent-based engine is to uh, collaborate all the different parts of the network and uh, using the analysis uh, to uh, control and uh, uh, simulation and to, to make the whole network, the whole system uh, very intelligent and uh, uh, automatically. Okay, next please. Oh, this uh, we will. So next, we will discuss more about the intent. Uh, basically, intent-based network is a self-driven network. Uh, we mean self-driven is we do not need to introduce some more man manually uh, uh, um, 
Mandarin works. So um, it is uh, an intelligent worker can out automatically convert and verify and deploy and configure and optimize itself. So it is very intelligent and uh, um, it will uh, run very, uh, uh, it is very reliable. So it is, uh, it will automatically solve abnormal events to ensure the network reliable and it will achieve the target network state uh, according to different application requirements. Uh, this, this is this ITO uh, architecture of intent based network. Okay, next please. So in our network, we will see some scenarios and the uh, real scenarios for intent based network. Uh, this is uh, uh, cloud and uh, network convergence uh, scenario. And uh, we see uh, different applications will have different SLA requirements. For example, uh, the game and uh, some security applications will need low latency and uh, uh, low latency uh, data plane. So they will need to choose a, a path that is low latency. But some industrial uh, will need high reliability and the low latency uh, plane. So they will have different requirements. And also some monitoring uh, and the back backup applications will need high uh, bandwidth. So we need to figure out the different applications needs and uh, give the, their appropriate uh, path accordingly. Next, please. And also this is a very, uh, real uh, scenario what we, we are deploying currently. This is uh, cloud edge and end collaboration. In 5G and MEC, uh, actually we can see, we will have a lot of connections and uh, the applications uh, and the content will, will be uh, in different parts of the network. So uh, actually the network itself will become more complicated. If there is a problem, so you need to figure out which part and you, you really need a, a high intelligent uh, system to help you to monitor the whole application, the whole service. Okay, next please. Uh, this is currently our research and the development of intent based network. Um, Actually, we, we have done some research work uh, in, the next, uh, in the past few years, uh, but currently we think uh, really we need to uh, bring the intent-based network to the industry. So uh, we are uh, doing some project in ONAP and uh, uh, we have already uh, uh, have, have a requirement in ONAP uh, release H and uh, uh, we will do the first step uh, in 5G slicing uh, this, this uh, use case and uh, uh, introduce the intent-based network in the ONAP architecture. Okay, next please. Oh, uh, this is more details. So if you are interested in it, I think maybe we can uh, take, uh, 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 take it offline and uh, we can discuss more in the organizations in, in standardizations. Okay, next please. And we also also set up a develop forum uh, in the in February. And uh, as you see the special session, and we have different uh, speakers from different uh, companies. And uh, we we really uh, thank you very much to uh, and we discuss a lot um, on this how to how to implement and uh, in different uh, in ONAP and how to for modeling and uh, what's the framework. Okay, next please. And uh, this is our overview of um, intent-based IBM model based on ONAP project. Uh, in ONAP, actually we think this is a very good uh, choice uh, to, to, uh, to implement IBM because it is still, it is already very uh, automated and uh, it have a control loop. So uh, basically it can match the IBM's requirement very, very perfectly. And so uh, we first we will introduce some uh, nature language processing in UUI and this will translate the intent uh, automatically. And after get the intent of, uh, 
uh, we, we will set up the monitoring, uh, monitoring module in DCAE. And using the closed loop, we will do the monitoring, we will do the policy, and we also need to, to set up the control, uh, control, uh, configuration in, into our controller. But, but uh, here we have a missing part like the digital wing. Uh, here uh, we, we need to verify uh, the intent in the digital wing to verify the, uh, the change will be good or not. Okay, next please. So this is uh, uh, what we have already done in uh, ONAP in release, release H. Uh, we have done the UUI part, uh, which is to uh, put the intent into into the uh, from from the users like text or audio, then we use the natural language processing to uh, to to map it into different uh, complicated parameters for the network. So the use, users will be very simple to uh, use the application, but the language can uh, network can still understand the language. Okay, next please. And next, we will also uh, add some cl closed loop in uh, uh, with IBM in ONAP. Like uh, uh, when after uh, after get the uh, intent from the UUI, we will set up the monitoring. We will upload the uh, the, the modeling in DCAE, and also we will optimize uh, in o OS to change like some resources and uh, to do policy and SO and uh, uh, using controller to make the things work together. Next, please. Okay, this is, uh, we think on that maybe we can do 80% uh, of the IBM work in, uh, in the IBM architecture, but also we still need some other help and some other uh, collaboration with, with some of the project in RFN. Uh, for example, uh, we maybe we need some uh, analysis and application analysis and the data analysis uh, to do more intelligent uh, from the Acumers, Panda, uh, etc. And maybe we can also uh, in, uh, collaborate with ODL and the Open Switch uh, to to process the what what intent can uh, can do in the whole cl closed loop. Okay, this is all what uh, I share with all of you. And uh, thank you. Very thank good. You. Excellent, excellent. Thank you. So China Telecom's leadership in intent-based is absolutely well, very welcomed by the all the global players in open source, right? As you know, ONAP, uh, Open Daylight, Acumos has a global uh, developer forum and everybody participates and you know this is your leadership is very well uh, very well taken thank you very much thank you thank um, you and and with that I think uh, we are going to take a break uh, we would love to serve you coffee and give you cookies but you know you're on your own uh, given the virtual event uh, we will be back exactly at uh, seven o'clock Pacific, uh, I would say 11 a.m. China time. Uh, so please, you know, get some coffee and come back right on time. I know we are on a roll. We have uh, Baidu, we have ZTE, we have, you know, China Mobile uh, going to talk right after the break. Thank you. Mm -hmm.